Welcome back to Outdoor Adventures, everybody. My name is Joanna and today we are going to be doing one of our most recognizable and well-loved classes. Uh, we do this for uh, school groups, we do this for youth camps and family camps. It's Wet and Wild. So Wet and Wild is our pond study. Uh, we go around and yes, we often talk about the different creatures that come to the pond, beavers, deer. However, our goal is usually to look for these smaller macro invertebrates. Even though we don't need a microscope, sometimes they're itty bitty. Living underneath in all the leaf sediment, uh, there's tons of different types of bugs, but it's always really fun to look around in the muck and uh, explore a world that we didn't really know existed. Hopefully we'll find some mayfly larvas. Uh, they're pretty cool because they have three tails. We will We'll probably also find snails, minnows, dragonfly larva. There's a possibility we could find a giant water bug. We're definitely gonna find some mosquitoes. So these are our tools of the trade. Uh, you do not need full-fledged waders that go up to your hips. Rain boots will do just fine. Um, and you don't need a net this big, but a net really helps. Uh, so let's go. So before you start trying to collect anything, make sure you fill up a bucket or container with water. It being white really helps because then you can see better what you've caught. So today what we found is a leopard frog and I'm gonna pick her up in just a moment. Uh, before I even pick her up, I just wanna talk to you and your kids about how to not harm our froggy friends. If you put on bug spray, like I did, make sure that you then wash your hands if you're gonna be handling any sort of amphibians because they absorb uh, the chemicals that are on your hands straight through their skin and that can kill them. Always wash your hands before you're gonna try and go frog catching because otherwise you might not kill them right then, but it could be later. Hey girl. <laughs> You can tell this one is a leopard frog because of the really, really bright colors on her. Um, it's really bright green, all the little black spots. And I can talk about her as being a her because that circle right behind her eye, that's her ear. In frogs, uh, if it is about the same size as the eye, it's a female. And in males, uh, that ear disc, their eardrum will always be larger than their eyes. Here in this tray are a few of the things that we caught just now. Uh, a few tips for you at home. One of the things I always tell my students to do is not just to look for the shapes of creatures and look for creatures themselves, but look for movement. Uh, some of these things in here are already like, they have a kind of a residue of muck on them. They're really well camouflaged. And so the only way that you can see them is once they start moving around. Well, we have a few different types of minnows here. People always ask me about minnow identification and it's super hard because they're so small, but you can see we do have a few different kinds and ones at different stages of development. We did manage to find a giant water bug, even though the one we found is not so giant. He already devoured at least one of the other critters we had in here. They have a pretty voracious appetite. These are also known as toe biters. So this is the reason I don't go wading around in the muck uh, with my bare toes. He has sort of a straw-like mouth, strikes right into the, the center of whatever he's caught and then his saliva turns the insides of that creature into mush and he just sucks it up through the straw. <laughs> a really well-known creature uh, that we already saw the frog a little bit ago. Uh, we have two tadpoles in here at different stages of development. They also could be developing into different frogs because one tadpole is significantly smaller than the other one. Um, so it might be that he just hasn't gotten bigger yet but it also might be he's turning into a different type of frog. Tadpoles are something that your kids could totally pick up in their hands and it would be safe as long as they've washed them. But you can see he has a tail, they have gills underneath their mouth, can you see? The mayfly larva is right here in the center. Uh, they have three tails and they, they use their tail to sort of suspend them in the water so they can like hang down from that tail because of all the surface area. The way that they move in the water is they just kind of like dance side to side like this. I just think that's really funny. I have two different types of houses 
uh, that the caddisfly larva have built. So this one here is uh, little pieces of leaf debris. And there is a little guy in there. This one is uh, just different style. So this is like very, very short. So it looks like it's been chopped up like that. This one is lengthwise long. Oh, there he is, there he is. So I think some people might feel overwhelmed uh, feeling like they have to know the name of a creature in order to appreciate it. Sometimes they're moving too fast and you can't tell. But even if you can't speak with authority on like, this is a caddisfly larva or this is a dragonfly larva, you don't know what type of bug it is. You can speak with authority that these creatures display the glory of God. And you could say, but this is why it's because of God. It's not because you have all this special knowledge. So the scripture I'll be reading today is a section of Psalm 104. Uh, it begins by saying, bless the Lord, O my soul, and ends again by saying, bless the Lord, O my soul. How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom, you've made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Here's the sea, vast and wide, teeming with creatures beyond number, living things both great and small. There the ships pass and the Leviathan, which you formed to frolic there. The only re reason I read 26 is because I love the idea that God created these creatures to also play and have fun. I think that's wonderful. The psalmist is just looking here at the variety of life that there is, big things, small things. And so when you do this sort of an activity, um, you'll be finding, again, like small things, sometimes things you never knew existed. And the psalmist says, the, what we should do in response to that is just worship the Lord. So hopefully you'll get out there. Uh, you'll find your heart becoming worshipful as you uh, discover new things, you adventure through some muck. So hopefully you'll join us next time. Mm -hmm.